Hey y'all, it's David Ducker coming back at you, and today we're going to be talking about problem GMs, the railroad conductor. We're going to be talking about uh, the GMing style, which uh, which is very very much like the, the frustrated writer. He's got his plot, he's got his NPCs, he might have set pieces that are going to happen no matter what, and there's not very much that you as the players can do to change what's going to happen. Now, one of the strengths of role-playing games are unlimited interactivity. You can change everything because you've got this uh, GM with you who should be able to go on the fly, react and adapt to what's going on. So when you have the railroad conductor, you know, the man who's stringing you along on the rails, out of town, into the dungeon, whatever he's doing with you, when you have that man, he's not playing to the strength of the medium. Uh, and see my video, um, the medium is the message for more on what role-playing games do well. But one of the main things they do well, as I said, is interactivity. And the railroad conductor does not allow you to interact with the world. He might allow you to see it. You're looking out the windows of the train. He, he might have great descriptions. You know, the, the beautiful city with the uh, spiraling minarets, the high walls, the bas reliefs depicting the, uh, the bulls with the head of a man, uh, of course, crowned as the divine bull of heaven uh, should be. You know, the people with their elegant robes and their braided beards uh, with their scimitars, the dust in the streets, the garish colors of the buildings, the, the music that you can hear out of the palaces of the wealthy filling the streets. You might have, you know, a lot of great stuff to look at, but if you try to say, oh, I'm going to go up to the, the palace, I hear the music, I knock on the door and talk to the, uh, uh, whoever's in here, the, the caliph, the satrap, whoever he is, you know, the railroad conductor's like, oh, no, 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 you can't knock on that door. Uh, nobody answers the door. The guards usher you away. You're unable to talk to them at all. You know, he's got all these invisible roadblocks, invisible walls, so that uh, you can't change anything in the setting. So he might have, you know, an NPC come in and, and say, you know, you must go here and do this thing so, so that the kingdom will be saved. So you go off, you do the thing. Often the railroad conductor won't even let you fail. You know, you're going to succeed. You're going to succeed the way he wants you to. There's no other way to succeed except the way that he wants, that he's written. Because he's got you all on a script. You just don't know what the script is. Uh, so you can't fail. He probably will protect you from death. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, no, I, I dropped to zero hit points. And the GM will say, oh, you just fall unconscious. Don't worry about it. Uh, or he gives you the, the wand of healing or the, you know, the, the belt of invincibility, so that you can just move through without disrupting the story. There might be dice for you to roll. There might be uh, some opportunities for you to describe things, but those things ultimately won't change the world. They won't change the plot, so they're rendered unimportant. The combat doesn't matter, because it just doesn't matter if you win or lose. The railroad GM often has invincible villains. They ha they can teleport. They can go ethereal. They have uh, invulnerability. You can only kill them when the script says you can kill them. You know you can't poison them. You can't backstab them. You can't join their side. Uh, you, you know your options are severely restricted. So again, this plays against the strength of the medium. And a lot of players, you know, not only come for that draw, but a lot of players uh, feel it's, it's inherent and it's implied when you join a game, you'll get to change the story in some way, even if it's just you succeed or you fail. But uh, for the Railroad GM, it's like you're either going to succeed or fail based only on what he wants. And he might want you to fail. He might, you know, take you through and his bad guy beats you down. And that's the way it was always going to end, and the whole scenario was designed to make you feel impotent. Uh, and I'll do another problem GM video about that specific style. So that's one problem, is the lack of uh, freedom. 
Another problem is a strength of role-playing games is customization. You can make any character you can imagine. You can make his history, his goals, his personality, his fighting style, um, all kinds of things right out of your head. You don't have a palette to work with. You don't have to paint by numbers. You're not constricted by classes. Uh, it's total freeform freedom. That's one of the, the things RPGs do better than any other media. You know, better than a video game. They, they just can't do all those options. Uh, way better than like a choose-your-own-adventure story. But it, for the Railroad GM, you can probably still make your character uh, as detailed as you want, but it doesn't matter. No matter who you are, you're getting the same storyline, the same interactions. You could, you could write that you're the king. You'll be treated only the way the script wants you to be treated. You could write that you're a peasant, and suddenly you're, you're treating with the caliph and he's asking for your help. Uh, so the railroad GM often doesn't really care about logic. He doesn't care about you. He cares about him. Uh, and his logic that he wrote before you guys got started, before you wrote your character, that character's destiny was determined by the railroad GM. So four players coming in they've, who've done the work. I made this great character. He's got goals, he's got plot hooks, he's got NPCs, he's got places that he's from. I know what he looks like, what his personality is. And I come in here and you know, I can't wait, GM, to get in with my uh, my storyline with the assassins. You know, and, and the GM says, Oh well, don't worry about that. You know, you're sent out into the desert against mummies, and you're like, Well, my character doesn't like mummies, he's afraid of mummies, I wouldn't go there. The GM is like, oh no, you go there. Oh, have no fear of that. And he just pushes you along however he can to get out with the mummies. And you'll never meet your assassins, uh, even if you wrote 10 pages of backstory for them. And that uh, can really disenfranchise players a lot. Uh, and they say, well, you know, I did all this work and I, it, it, was, it was ignored. It was not rewarded uh, at all. You know, I got taken advantage of, I got taken for granted, uh, and if that's what role-playing games are, uh, I'm not going to play anymore. So, again, railroad GMs, like all of the problem GMs, uh, dam can damage the hobby as well as, as well as damaging individual enjoyment, and the two go hand in hand. If you turn someone off of the hobby, you're hurting the hobby as a whole. Because they're not only not playing, not spending money, investing time, but they're telling all their friends, oh, no, no don't play role-playing games. Uh, I, I had an experience, and let me tell you what role-playing games are all about. And then they, they tell them, you know, it's like a video game, but worse. <laughs> because there's no graphics or voice acting, and you have to roll all the mechanics yourself. And But there's no linear plot branching, and it and, uh, doesn't matter what character you make. Um so it's besmirching the good name of the hobby, which I hate to see. So that's pro my diatribe on the railroad conductor, on why it's bad, um, because it's playing against the strength of, of the media. Um, now again, just like most of the videos in this series, uh, this really applies to campaigns. For a one-shot, a railroad can be a great thing. Uh, and I've done videos, I believe I did... Uh, you know, Railroads versus Sandboxes was the video title. And I discussed what railroads do well um, and what sandboxes do well. And the answer to that is railroads are great for one-shots when you only have four hours. Uh, you know, a railroad GM in that situation might not be bad, especially if he's a good writer. But if you're doing an ongoing, long-term campaign... I really believe that the railroad GM is probably a bad idea because of the reasons I, I've spent 10 minutes discussing. It, uh, it, it does not play to the strength of, of role-playing games. So that's what I've got to say about uh, the railroad conductor. Uh, let me know in the comments below when you've encountered these. Could you get off the rails? Um, you know, what... what ludicrous ways did this GM try to try to use to keep you on the rails and until I see you again good day and good gaming